He was the Word of God. As he became flesh, we had him, we touched him, and we beheld his glory. Now we see in him as who he is going to be. Where was I at? I'm like that feather lost in the world again. 14. What verse? 14. 13? 14. 14. 13. 13. He was told. Verse 13 is what I just finished reading. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. Verse 14. In the armies which were in heaven, where are we supposed to be at during this time? In heaven. We've been at the marriage supper, haven't we? We've been at the marriage supper. Now, we're getting fixed to do something. In the armies which were in heaven, that's you and me, church, followed him up on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. What did he say to them? He gave to the, to the bride, uh, he granted them that they could have all this fine white linen. Hallelujah. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he dreadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. But I mentioned earlier a couple different times, you know, things that a sin is going to be is not always right now at this present time. Even though into the almighty eyes and, 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 and destination of God Almighty, Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But right now at this present time, the world is not accepting and receiving Him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords because He has not yet took over complete dominion of this world. He is still let kingdoms reign. He is still let leaders, you know, put, uh, uh, dictate or whatever you want to call it. He still let them make laws and rules and regulations and set up their thrones and do all that they want. But at this time when he comes back, he's coming back now as King of Kings and Lord Amen. of Lords and he's going to prove to the world who he really is. He's coming back to prove that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords because it's coming back to destroy the armies and the nations that's both uh, blasphemed God, stood out against His name, and, and did all the wicked, ungodly things that they have done. He's coming back to open the door, take them away, this throne from the kingdoms and from all that they've got, and He is going to set up His kingdom to rule and reign here up on earth for a thousand years, which we call the millennium reign. He is going to be the king.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. John Saul as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He saw Satan's reign that he had for just a little while. A reign of madness of the things that he was doing on the face of the earth. He saw it brought down to nothing. Hallelujah. By the words that proceeded out of the mouth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You can continue reading that chapter. I'm not going to this morning. I'll leave it to you. That you can read it and look at it a little bit. You'll see that then is what's called the Great Supper, the Supper of the Almighty. You know what they're going to be feasting upon? The angels are going to call all the powers to the air. Jesus may have said one time, he said, where the carcasses are, there the eagles shall be. And now the angels cause all the fowls of the air that love to eat dead flesh. And he calls them together and he says, here is the greatest supper you'll ever have. I'm using my words. Here is the greatest supper you'll ever have. Have your feast. Because they come and they buy and eat all the flesh of all the ungodly of the ones that the Son of God had just destroyed. They clean up the earth and they get rid of all the rubbish that's left. And it's called the Supper of the Almighty God. I'm glad I'm not going to be a part of that Supper. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be at the first one. Amen. Amen. The buried Supper. Amen. Amen. What a day that's going to be when he comes riding down on the white horse. It's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's not coming back at this event like he did the first time when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. He rode in there meek, mild, tender, and merciful, kind, and loving. And just the one man parade, you might say, had all the city out there on all the palm trees and trees and stuff down before him, crying out on the to the most high. Except him in the calling of the king. They thought he was going to do then to what he's going to do when he goes back to the white house. for a long time. But when he goes back this time on the white horse, he's not coming back with love. He's not coming back with mercy. He's coming back with judgment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Coming back with judgment to judge the world. Hallelujah. For the things that they have done. You love me today? Yes. Amen. Aren't you glad that you sit that little bit of wine with you? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm waiting. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm waiting. And I want to be there when you come.